right? April, I think it's the 21st or something. I think that's right. Yes. Good morning and welcome to St. John's United Church of Christ. I am so excited to be here worshiping with all of you as part of St. John's community. Few quick announcements for our community. Um, inside of your bulletins, there are um, order forms. If you would like lilies for Easter Sunday, you have this Sunday and next Sunday. So if you want Easter lilies for Sunday, Sunday morning worship, get those ordered. Also, if you do not have a name tag and would like one ordered, you can see Lee in the back in the narthex after worship. They are extremely helpful, not only to me, as I get to know each and every one of you, but it's really nice for visitors and others who show up that may not know your name. We all learn differently. Sometimes hearing it works really well. Sometimes seeing it helps people remember names. So if you don't have a name tag and would like to order one, please see Lee. Also, today is one great hour of sharing. It is an extra offering that we collect. It's one of the offerings of the United Church of Christ. Not only is it an offering of the United Church of Christ, but it is also an offering that the United Methodists, the PCUSA Presbyterians, the American Baptists are all taking on this Sunday. And we take the money that all of us have collected and one great hour of sharing does amazing things throughout the world, from disaster relief to helping refugees, to helping with developing programs in countries to help people out of their poverty and the issues of their communities. So it is amazing work that we do globally with the global church. Um, so I invite you to prayerfully consider what you can donate to that. And you can write a check and just put OGHS, one great hour of sharing on your envelope, on your check and leave it in the offering plate. So we thank you for all that you do, not only for this community, but the community of God. And as we gather, we gather remembering that we are the body of Christ. And so at this time, I invite you to stand up and to share the peace of Christ with one another.
Thank you, Jennifer and Ruth. It certainly is a happy occasion to be here today on Pastor Katie Joe's first day, first Sunday. Um, please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in spirit and in truth. God's love is for you and for all the people everywhere. May we share in God's love and life. May we be renewed in the refreshing spirit of the living Christ. The living Christ is with us. To join with me in our gathering prayer. Everlasting God, we gather together knowing you are present among us. Guide our hearts and minds to listen for your word in our hearts, in our movement, in our prayers. Open us to new insights, to be challenged by the scriptures, to be assured by our songs, to be encouraged in prayer, knowing that you making things new, including us, May we be open to the Spirit. Amen. be seated. When we keep silent about our sins, we are burdened and weak, 
But if we acknowledge our sins before God, God will forgive and heal us. Let all who are faithful offer prayer in times of distress. So let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy One, we confess there are moments when we desire to see you bring condemnation and others, or wish that your love has not for the whole world, but just a few, like us. But your love is bigger than our limited lenses broader than our small scope of vision of all that love embodies. Help us to see the world as you do. Help us to love as you do. Release us from our need to condemn and set us free for love, for it is what you came in flesh to show us. Amen. Jesus has come into the world not to condemn it, but to set us free by love. Know the grace of God surrounds you and keeps you in love now and forever. Amen. Do I have children who are here that want to come join me on the steps? Do I have some more? Can I sit by you? Your name's Elise, right? So I want to say thank you to you for the beautiful flowers you left me in my office. Did you guys make flowers and put your pictures on them last week? Yeah. They're beautiful. A whole bouquet of children's faces on flowers. I love it. I'm pretty sure you did. You'll have to come see your pictures in, my, in the bouquet. Mm -hmm. So, question for you. Have you guys ever heard the question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? No. No, you've never heard that question before? You? No? You guys probably haven't. You're pretty little. Okay, so let's think about this. What do you think came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg. The egg? Well, if it was the egg, where did the egg come from? A chicken. A chicken! So was the chicken here first? Yeah. But where did the chicken come from? Egg. It hatched out of an egg! Oh, there's no answer because they both do it. There is no answer, right? It's this crazy question that people ask, what came first? And nobody really knows, right? But I know what came first. You know what came first? What? You, got, you know your Bible stories. There was nothing before God created it. So the answer is nothing, right? You got it. So one of the things that we're talking about, the big people are talking about in church today is whose love came first? People's love or God's love? You guys got it. You know what? Did you know that you are smarter than most adults? Did you know that? So often, <laughs> so often, oftentimes we think we have to do something to get God's love, right? Yes, mommy has a dress on. Sometimes we think we have to do something to earn God's love, right? We have to be good. We have to, what do you think you have to do to get God's love? Or what do you think adult? Be nice. Things we say, right? You have to do these things to get God's love. Did you know that's not true? help people. Those are all really good things, right? But you know what? Before you ever did any of that, God already loved you. Is that super exciting? God already loved you before you ever did anything good or nice or right. God just loves you the way you are. You got it. 
God loves you the way you are. That is exactly right. And that's what we're going to talk about. Because sometimes we as adults have a really hard time remembering that. Can you guys remember that? I can remember that a long time. Yeah? Good. I'm glad. Obviously, you, you know the, the story of creation. Can you guys remember that God loves you? Yeah? God loves you no matter what. I always will remember that. I am so glad. Do you think we should pray before you go to Sunday school? Yeah. Yeah? You guys ready? Yeah. Do you want to repeat after me? Yeah. yeah. you do that? All right. Dear God. Thank you for, Thank you for loving, us loving us and help us, and help us to, love to love others. Amen. Amen. All right. You guys get to head off to Sunday school. Okay. Go follow Brian. Go, 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 go.
Our scripture reading today is from Psalm 107. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. The second reading is from Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, doing the will of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places of Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not by the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Be so when I was in high school, if you wanted to be part of the National Honor Society, you could apply. Not everybody got into the National Honor Society, and I don't know if it was a percentage of the student or a certain number, but only so many got in. So I applied, right? Looks really good on college applications. Me and a bunch of my friends, we all applied. Well, letters got sent home on a certain date, and I got in. I was so excited. Not only was there excitement at home, but I couldn't wait to get to school and talk to some of my friends. I was really excited to tell them the great news. Because when we have really good news, we want to share it, right? We want to share it. And so I get to school, and I went up to one of my, one of my best friends and said, I got my letter, I got in. And she looked at me and said, how did you get in? And that's when I realized she didn't. This story does a little bit of good and a little bit of this is what we're missing from the scripture. Scripture tells us we should give thanks and tell the world the good news, right? Something we should do when we have good news to share, we should share it. But the other part of it, we have totally missed, and that is the fact of grace. We live in a society where everything is about checking off our to-do list, having accomplishments, working hard, and achieving something. 
And by no means am I saying that is a bad thing. Work hard, accomplish things, do good in this world. But when we take that idea of this American life and overlay it onto God, that is when we struggle. Because we think that we have to be somebody, that we have to have a title, that we have to have so much accomplished or be somebody specific before God loves us or before we can go to God. We think something in us needs to be right or complete. And that's not the way it is. Scripture tells us that God loves us before anything else, before we do anything, before we accomplish anything, before we become somebody, God has already loved us. And for that love, we go out into the world and give thanks and praise. That is exactly what this psalm is about. And so it starts off with this gathering of all the people from the north and the south and the east and the west. Everybody is coming together. There is no group of people that is better or excluded, but the people from every corner of the world is included in this, in this amazing love. There's four parts after this that go through the different struggles of the time. And we got one little piece of it. We got the piece of those who are sick. But it goes through and it talks about those who also are hungry because in that time there were many, many people that were hungry, just as there are in our world today. And it also talks about Oh, I got to remember the fourth one. Those who are in exile. One of those that we don't think about now in today's world because it's not an American issue. We don't worry about being exiled or displaced from our homes. But in that time, it was a very real struggle. It also translates to those who are lonely, because as you've been ripped out of your home, ripped out of your family life and put somewhere else, you are lonely. You have lost your community, you have lost your people, you've lost your home. So we have those who are hungry, those who are sick, those who are displaced or lonely, and those who go out to sea, which sounds a little strange to include in that group of people but in biblical times, those who went out to sea, the sea is very unpredictable. The sea is this very chaotic place that you have no idea what is going to happen. It is the place of the unknown and uncontrollable. I am assuming that many of us have been in these places in different times of our lives, whether we've been lonely or sick or in a place of the unknown. We don't have to fix it. We don't have to change our situation before we can show up or pray or be a part of the community. Because it says that God already loves us and God is already with us. No matter where we come from, no matter what is going on in our lives, the good news is that God has loved you always, from the beginning. That is the good news that we have to go out and to share with others. So I have to tell you this week as I'm putting stuff onto my bookshelves and going through some of the drawers and looking at things, don't remember what it was, but I found something that had the St. John's tree logo, said St. John's United Church of Christ, and right underneath it, it said, rooted in love. And of course, as I'm working on this, this scripture and this sermon and seeing that, 
I said, that is exactly right. Because when the seed is in the ground, the seed does nothing. But the ground around it is the love of God and gives it the nutrients that it needs to begin to grow. We as St. John's are rooted in love. We are a community that has grown from God's love. Not from our accomplishments, not from what we do, but from God's love. And from that, we have become this amazing congregation that reaches out to the community, and not just the community of Chesterfield, but the community of St. Louis and to the world because we were rooted in love. Our worship is rooted in love. Our fellowship is rooted in love. Our mission is rooted in the love of God. So we as the people of God, we grow from that. We give thanks for it. And we go out into the world declaring God's love for each and every one of us. Amen. you now to join with me in a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we gather together today remembering how much you love us your unconditional love that has been with us our whole lives since the beginning of creation. You have loved all of your creation. God, help us to remember that we don't have to do anything in order to show up to come to you, to be with you. God, help us to feel your love and your presence in our lives. And from that, to go out into the world, telling others of the amazing love that we have found in you. May our words May our deeds, may our smiles and our hands show the world how grateful we are 
for your love in our lives. God, today we ask for special prayers for Mary, for Ellen, for Rich, for Jean, for Don, Mary Jane, Carolyn, Susie, Helen, and Evelyn, for those of our choir who have brought beautiful music to us. We also pray for Richard, for June, Elizabeth, Sue, Sherry, Barbara, and Gloria, who are in need of your prayers. God, we remember today those throughout the world who are in need of your presence and your love, for the countries who are enduring war and famine, for those who are struggling in poverty and dictatorships. God, we pray for your people throughout the four corners of the world who struggle with illness and loneliness and hunger and chaos. And so together we join our voices to pray that prayer which you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In gratitude for God's light, and mercy, and thanksgiving for the love that will not let us go, in joyful acknowledgement of the faith that binds us to one another and to our God, let us bring our offerings. You can place your offerings in the offering plate at the back of the sanctuary. You can mail in checks, drop them off at the church. You can also donate online or by texting the number that is in the bulletin. But St. John's thanks you for your continued support of our missions and our ministries here and throughout the world. So let us stand together and sing our prayer of thanks, our doxology. Join me in the prayer of dedication. We bring our treasure, O oh God, not to build monuments to ourselves, but to send messengers of your good news to all the world. May our gifts reflect the depths of love we have known and that we want to share. Amen.
Go out into the world with eyes to see the needs of others, with ears to hear their cries of both joy and sorrow, with hands that are ready to give. For you go in the power of God to the children of God. And as you go, may God surround you with love, Jesus Christ fill you with peace, and the Holy Spirit lead you in hope. Amen. You may be seated.